Hey folks, Thomas here. Welcome back to Mirrors Lab. In today's video, I'd like to show you these wooden circuit boards that I've been working on for a while. They're finally ready to go, and I'm really excited to tell you all about them. Let's have a closer look. Here we are. There's two of them here, and I've got a, a bunch more of older ones, kind of older here, that I've been practicing with and testing with and trying different ideas with for the past few months. And uh, here's what I've come up with. So here's one that is unpopulated. It's ready to go with, uh, you, you can just install resistors and caps and wires and things right away on it right now. And here is a power supply that I wired up, um, which is exactly the same as this. And uh, these actually go together. They're going to go into a uh, guitar amplifier that I'm building right now. And this is the power supply and then this will be the audio board right here. And uh, so the idea behind it is it's uh, it's just a nice solid block of oak right here, oak wood. And uh, here is some copper wire and I've attached these to the board in uh, really sort of uh, in just the right sort of spacing here to be able to fit uh, full size capacitors and resistors and things in here. And, um, and with plenty of clearance and it's super rugged and solid and um, it looks really cool as well too. And uh, it's really inexpensive and easy to make yourself. And uh, I'd love to tell you all about how you can make it yourself here as well too. So let's uh, have a look into that now. Here's a, here's a closer look at the circuit board right here. You can see all the copper mounts. Those are made from just standard Home wiring cable, this sort of 14-2 stuff right here. Yeah, and I make them about maybe three quarters of an inch long. And uh, I believe the spacing is three quarters of an inch here and about one inch right there. And uh, yeah, these are number six, three eighths inch screws. And uh, the wood itself is half an inch. So you don't have to worry about the screws going all the way through the board because they're not as long as the board. And then I just drill out some 3 32nd holes and that helps to make sure that the wood is not going to split. And um, I found that that hole size is pretty particular. Any smaller than that and uh, the wood would be prone to splitting. But 3 32nds is perfect for a, a number 6 3 8 screw just like that with the round head on the top of it. Here's a closer look at the power supply here. You can see there's the uh, diodes right there. So there's the full bridge rectifier and the power supply filter caps and there's a bunch of 100k resistors right here that go to the different uh plates for the 12x7 tubes that are in the amp and then there's a few different areas here that go off to where the uh the screen is and uh and then that goes over to the b plus as well too yeah so that's what it looks like close up oh and i've got a big ground rail right there so it's really easy to find the ground on it okay so let's talk about how to make how to make one of these. So first you just get yourself some standard home wiring cable. This is just some 14-2 stuff right here. And um, all I do, I'm just gonna just do a quick little demonstration here. I just cut it right down the center here with a sharp knife. And then that exposes, you've got three wires to work with right here. You've got your, your ground and then there's your common and then there's your hot. And they're all the same and you can use any of these so since this one doesn't have the sheathing on it we'll just grab that one and use that for a demonstration here um, but if you wanted to use one of these other ones all you have to do is just cut this sheathing off here just like that just be careful not to cut yourself of course and then you just pull that back like that and away you go I'm just going to put that knife down so I don't cut myself here. Oh, I didn't do a very good job cutting that. There we go. And you can just kind of pull that wire out like that as well too. So we'll just cut that one off there as well too. Okay, so to make these little posts here, here's all you got to do. Just take one of these pieces of wire here and you grab yourself... Uh, basically just any set of needle nose pliers. I'll just grab these this multi-tool that I have handy here and you just grab the end of it like that and then you wrap it around in a circle. There we go. Just big enough to fit the screw through and then you grab that little eyelet and you bend that 90 degrees 
then you just take that and you cut the post about as long as you want it. So I do it about maybe three quarters of an inch. You don't really need to go much higher than that. It, it kind of depends on how many components you're going to mount to it. Sometimes you might make it a little bit longer. Sometimes you might make it a little bit shorter. And you can straighten it out if you want. I usually wait until they're installed and then I straighten them all out. And, uh, and there you go. That's, uh, that's what the little post looks like once it's made. Yeah, and then you just um, you get yourself a piece of wood. You know, it's just a random piece of pine. Um, it, you could actually use any kind of wood for this. Um, I have made some pine boards and spruce boards and all kinds of different wood and even apple wood as well too. Um, but I like to use the hardwood because I feel like it's just, it's more rugged and uh, it looks a bit nicer as well too. And it doesn't take dents and things like, it does, you know, it doesn't dent as easily, easily and stuff like that. But uh, anyhow, yeah, so you would just take this and, uh, you know, I don't have my drill handy, but you would just take yourself a little three thirty seconds bit, which I believe this is, and uh, you just drill a little hole in there, boom, put that in there, put it in with the screw, and away you go. Now, um, I've had a couple of questions about these uh, after I've shown them to a, a few of my friends, and um, they've wondered things like, you know, is a wooden circuit board safe to use? And I, I kind of wondered that as well, too. So I looked into it, and it, it is, you know. Although there is always a concern for fire, there is uh, some ways that you can sort of mitigate that. And uh, here's one of the ways that I, I think about it, and that sort of calms my nerves quite a bit. Maybe this is the wrong word for it, but is it the temperature coefficient for the components that I install on here? Say, like, these capacitors. These are rated um, uh, to have their given performance, which is 22 microfarads up to 450 volts. Um, and these are rated up to 105 degrees Celsius. So after a quick Google uh, search, I figured out that um, the, the combustion point for wood is much, much, much higher than that. It's, it's hundreds and hundreds of degrees. I think that the components themselves would have to catch on fire uh, before the actual wood would. You know, one of the nice parts about wood is it's such a great insulator. Uh, you don't have to worry about any conductivity between these posts whatsoever. You know, um, perhaps maybe if you saturated it in like a salty solution, it might happen. So, you know, you wouldn't want to put your amp like underneath the ocean or anything, but then you're not really going to do that anyways. Perhaps if there was a really high current situation inside the amplifier where some components shorted, and then there's a lot of current running through the, the components in the circuitry, um, so much so that they get very, very hot. That could be a concern. However, um, all of my amplifiers are fused, and there's all kinds of safety protection built into them. So I think that that is always, you know, a possibility, of course, but I'm, I'm mitigating that with a lot of other safety precautions so that it wouldn't happen, like fuses and switches and things like that. And uh, so it does bring the risk case down quite a bit lower. One of the benefits I really like about this is how affordable they are to make. Like this piece of wood was less than $10 and it was a really big piece. I, I cut it way down to the size I wanted for this project. So I can make multiple boards at a one piece that was less than 10 bucks. And uh, this wire, you know, I bought like a, a ton of it. And um, for I think maybe 20 bucks or something like that. So I can make literally hundreds if not thousands of these little uh, connectors here and uh, then I just needed some basic hand tools and just used a basic hand saw to cut it and uh, a drill was kind of handy to use but I figure a lot of folks that are building products have a drill on hand and then just some basic hand tools and that's basically all you need to make it and uh, you can make it any size or format that you want and that was a, a, a big um, a big plus I found with this because as I started building amplifiers a while ago and I was shopping online for turret boards and circuit boards, they're never the right size or layout. And they always, they never, maybe this is silly, but they don't look right, you know? Like, like I don't know. I, I really like the way something like this looks. Like it, I don't know. It just, it looks cool, you know, compared to like a green plastic circuit board. Like I just see those in everything, you know? And I, I kind of wanted to make something that was unique and um, that I'd be really proud to put my name on. And um, and although it's really simple and there's not much to it, I'm really proud of it. And I'm very, very excited to show it uh, to everybody and, and see what they think of it as well too. 
And I encourage you to build it yourself and try it out in some projects. And uh, if you do, please let me know. I'd be very excited to see um, what anybody else came up with. And maybe if they could take this idea and run with it and even come up with something cooler as well, that would be wonderful. But uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to, to mention in today's video. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to these boards. And in future videos, we're going to be doing some amplifier builds. And uh, we'll probably have another look at these boards once they get inside the amplifier that I'm working on right now, which is a really kind of a neat project. It's a, it's a Fender Blues Junior amplifier. And what I'm doing is I'm removing all of the circuit boards and components that are inside of the amplifier. And then I'm going to replace them with these boards here so that it's all 100% analog, um, point to point wired. There's no op amps. Um, we're gonna change out the reverb circuitry inside the amplifier so that it uses a tube driven reverb instead, um, different reverb tank. And uh, the circuit's probably gonna be a bit closer to a Princeton now, and um, I'm just really excited for it. I think we're gonna pop up a different speaker in it. Um, um, this is a project for a client of mine and they're really into these Weber speakers. And I think I might have had an amplifier with a Weber speaker in it a long time ago. I used to have a Silverface 70s Fender Deluxe Reverb that I was gigging with. And that was a really, really cool amplifier. It sounded awesome. And I believe that that had an upgraded Weber inside of it. And yeah, I remember that speaker sounded awesome. So really excited to see how this project's going to come along um, with this circuit board inside of it. Okay, folks, that brings us to the end of the video. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit the like button and you can always subscribe for more Mirrors Live videos just like this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.